All right, I think uh, we're about ready to start our last panel of the day. I want to uh, thank everyone for coming out today. <clears throat> it's been a big, big day. Let's hear it for everybody coming out today to this first annual, first ever Boston Cannabis Convention. My name is Mike Can. I'm a uh, medical marijuana patient and advocate for a long time now. I uh, hurt my back. I have leg pain every day down to my toes. I was a wrestler. I got a big bulging disc. And I use cannabis. I'm an athlete. You saw Bob Lobel down here. Let's hear it for Bob Lobel. Yeah. Guy covered sports his whole life. He's down here talking about marijuana. You got uh, Mikey Adams was here from EEI, another sports guy. See this whole thing? It's not uh, the stereotype anymore. It's everybody, you know, sports guys, er everybody. And that's where I come from. I hurt my back from sports. You see a lot of athletes, a lot of NFL, Major League Baseball players. They use marijuana. There's a good reason for it, because it's good medicine. They get hurt. I got hurt. Uh, I could have used the pills. I was prescribed those. I hated them. I found that medical marijuana was the much better, safer way for me. And that's when I became an advocate for this. And uh, we have a, a panel of, I would say, activist advocates who have also had some of the same life experiences and done some of the same things, uh, spoken out for medical marijuana. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But beyond that, we're also going to talk about the fact that the other side never wants to talk about, that medical marijuana is medicine and it works for some people. How many of you people out there use medicine called medical marijuana? Does it work for you? Let's hear it if it works for you. If medical marijuana works for you, I want to, because like we don't exist. I don't get it. Like the other side doesn't want to acknowledge that we are, we, here I am. You know, how many of you are right there? And that's what this is about today. We're going to talk about medical marijuana as medicine. And it's my honor to introduce this panel. It could have even grown larger, but we, we had to stop at four because the table isn't big enough. But next time, I think we're going to get a bigger table because all you people came out tonight. First of all, we have uh, Rhode Island medical marijuana patient, survivor, advocate, mom, Donna Hackett. She, this woman survived uh, raids on her house. She survived cancer. And it's all about her and her family growing the medical marijuana and being open and transparent and getting better laws in Rhode Island, helping shape the law, helping progress things, taking part. That's Donna. Donna, say hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Donna H I'm Hackett. I um, have been a medical marijuana patient for seven years. Um, seven years ago, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer followed by um, three months later, stage three Ly uh, Lyme disease. Well, they're, they're both together. Um, the Lyme disease threw a lot of complications into my breast cancer. I did the regular chemo, bald. Three weeks after the day they tell you you're gonna be bald, you are. And I had a horrible time. I had a horrible time with the, the, the bone marrow shots, the, the radiated treatments, the scans, there, nothing went easy. And, and I consider myself a strong person, mother of two kids, you know, you can take anything. It kicked my ass. Like, I was in a dark hole, I didn't know I'd ever come out. And I had cannabis by my side my entire time. I was blessed with little bit of parents, and my children were 18 and 20, a senior in high school and a freshman in college. My son, Robert, in the second row right there, Rob, left college to grow my marijuana, because I told him the day that I knew. Bravo! Let's hear for Robert. And he's damn good. <laughs> he, he, he knew that I was going to need a lot more medicine than the swag you could buy for $60 in the city next to you. I was going to need the real stuff. And that's how we started on our journey as a family, surviving one of the darkest things you can battle through, cancer and, and just the trauma. I wasn't one of those Barbie dolls that bounced back. I have gone through hell. My hair and my nails did not stop growing until I quit all prescription drugs two years ago. I was on 2,100 milligrams of a fibromyalgia drug 
that made me drool and forget things. It, I looked in the mirror one day and I cried. I didn't even know I was crying. The tears were streaming down my face and I looked at my son and I said, who am I? What's the point of surviving cancer and going through all this? And then not recognizing yourself anymore. It was eating me alive. And I, that day, threw out all my pills and I said, bring it on. Bongs, pens, hash, let's make everything under the sun. And I have lived that way for two years as to the astonishment of many of my top Boston hospital doctors with no prescription drugs. I manage my pain. I control my pain. No one else does. That, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank Donna. you. Thank you. She's a survivor. And she's a fighter, you can tell. Uh, we also have, she's a, a, somebody that I see often on the radio show I do, The Young Jerks. You can see us on WEMF Radio every Saturday. Yeah. And she actually co-hosted the show last week with me. She's got many uh, admirable qualities. She's, she's always working, a hard worker. And she's really a nice person. And she's behind a company called Healthy Heady Lifestyle. And you know just from the title, it's got, think about that, Healthy Heady Lifestyle. It's about being smart about the weed, right, is it? Holly. Uh, ho Holly Evans is her name. Thank you, thank you. What is ho Healthy Heady Lifestyle about? Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be on the panel and here at the New England Cannabis Convention. I'm so thrilled to see you all in the audience today, and thank you for coming out. This is something that we all need to be uh, open and talk about because we are here to change the stigma. Healthy Heady Lifestyle is a um, company that I founded, co-founded with my husband. We do in-home retail sales and demonstrations of vaporizers. So what that means is we bring the devices to you so that you can try them in the comfort of your own home. We find that a lot of patients don't have the knowledge necessary to figure out what the best method of ingestion is for each person. So we want to be there to assist in this process. So we uh, provide that service in the comfort of your own home, and we provide the vaporizer at retail right there for you. We go through the entire device that, so you can be clear on how to operate it. Um, if you have questions about medibles or products that are infused with cannabis, we do have devices that can help you make those, such as a magical butter machine or a moda pot, which is actually one of our vendors here today as well. Um, my husband and I are advocates, have done a lot in the industry just to be the voice of those who feel that came, they cannot be the voice. Um, it's been a, a wonderful privilege and honor to be uh, among some amazing people and some amazing activists. Um, and I thank you again for letting me be here. Thank you, Holly. It's here for Holly. And uh, we also have uh, two doctors on the, on the panel today, which is very exciting. First of all, we have uh, Annie Casta. She's a medical doctor with CannaCare Doctors. Tell us about yourself, Annie. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, I am a medical doctor, and I believe that medical marijuana is appropriate and should uh, help patients like Donna. And I am a doctor who believes that marijuana is a medicine. Thank you. And uh, sitting next to her is another doctor. I hope I'm saying the company right. Integrate. Am I saying that right? Integrate, yes. Yep. And his name, I know this one, is Dr. Dan Einstein. And he looks like an Einstein, which I like. And he looks pretty hip at the same time. Dan, what's going on? Not too much. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm representing Integrate today. Um, I've been involved with uh, medical cannabis for about three years. Um, I'm currently working up in, in Burlington in Massachusetts, but before that I worked up in Maine for several years with uh, Dr. Dustin Sulak, which certainly probably many of you Mainers uh, may know as a big advocate up there uh, for medical marijuana, and he was actually the one who pulled me into, into working with medical cannabis. And um, it's certainly been a great ride since. It's been, it's been really exciting to see how the stigma has changed over that time. Um, when I first started this and I would tell people what I would do, I would sort of, that was kind of the conversation stopper. Um, and that has really changed even in the three years that I've been doing it. It's just, it's all of a sudden people are like, oh yeah, I have a, 
I have a friend or I have a neighbor who is really benefiting and, um, and people sort of come out with those stories as soon as I tell them what I do. Um, so it's been really great to see that. Um, before I was a medical doctor, I was also an herbalist. Um, uh, and so, you know, marijuana was certainly something we talked about, but we sort of always had to whisper about it. And, uh, and that's really nice to see it change. And it's nice to see, um, it's nice to be able to work with, with herbs in this way. Thank you, Dan. Thank you to the audience, too. It's nice to see people are not just checking out the booths, which is awesome, but you're here for the education and what we're doing in here. Um, I got some questions. Um, first of all, the medical marijuana program in Massachusetts. Almost like this event today, it's like it's semi-functional. We can't smoke it here. We're like, you know, we're, uh, you know, it's like ha freedom is almost here. We're more free than we were, right? But there's issues with this medical marijuana program where we know moms and patients that still can't find access to the medicine. They can get a recommendation from the doctors. We're, we're, I'm so happy you guys are here because in some places the doctors aren't there. In Mass General, they're not writing recommendations. You guys have stepped up and took it up on to help us patients, which is awesome. But then we can't get access oftentimes to this medicine like we should. How do you think this program is going? And if, if you have issue like I do with it, who's at fault? Where do you cast the blame? Um, well, I'm opening it up. So we'll start with Donna. Anyone else who wants to speak, just let us know. I, I think we still have a lot of work to do with education. I, I've always said, it's funny, I had the best surgeon in the country for breast cancer, Harvard teacher of sur you know, surgery, yet they weren't really you know, friendly about it back then. They're a little bit better now, but the, you, if you're a cannabis patient and that is your only source of pain management, you should have the right to do it in a hospital. Canada, Canada has started doing that, having rooms that are set aside for cannabis patients. We have so much work to do, and it starts with people like you going to hospitals saying, how do you feel about cannabis? Are you supporting patients who choose cannabis? What are you doing to help us change it? They're the ones that are now the key to really dramatically... But what about right now, it? like in mass? It, it's, there are patients still. We, we don't have caregivers. We you don't have, have dispensers. Who's at fault? Who, who, why in Rhode we Island, we have a caregiver system, and I, will, I have gone to every state house hearing that has anything to do uh, with jeopardizing growers' rights. My son is my gr expert grower. I have it in my home. I don't have to go anywhere, whatever medicine I want. And that's the way it should be. I've been through enough. A, a parent of an epileptic child has gone through enough. A family surviving cancer has gone through enough. They shouldn't also have to. I, I'm fine with dispensaries. I think they serve a purpose. But if they choose not to, they should not have to. If you opened up the growing rights to caregivers in Massachusetts, the medicine would be flowing shortly after, I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. And anyone else want to weigh in on the panel on that? So in, in Canacare, I work, work both in Maine and in, and in Boston, and I see, I see the difference in Maine. I think that patients in Maine have a lot of access. Um, they have access to us in Canacare. They have access to um, Dr. Sulak as well. And the, the fact that they have the dispensaries ability to get the medicine helps them a lot and I think that in Massachusetts it's up to you guys to stand up and say we want what they have in Maine we want the medicine and we need it and if you guys act you know actively tell them what you need I think that's that's the only way to change it and who's at fault I think it's us I think it's us for not wanting to tell them and speaking up for for the child who has epilepsy for the mom who has cancer and for every patient that needs Thank you. And, uh, Dan, do you have something to yeah, add to that? I, I would certainly second that. I, I think that uh, I, I often find particularly if, if I'm looking for a particular strain for, for folks, it's pretty much impossible for folks in Massachusetts, whereas, whereas in Maine it's not. You know, people, I can sort of be much more specific with my, my recommendation, um, and it's a real disservice to patients. Holly? I don't think I have enough time to uh, answer that question honestly, but um, I'm not going to say whose fault it was. I did vote for Falchuk, so we can leave it at that. Um, I think it's a disgrace, and I think it's absolutely unacceptable that patients do not have access at this point. 
This is something that goes back way to 1937. Uh, it's a lot of money and a lot of greed involved, and we need to stand up for the right to cultivate essentially a weed that can save a lot of people. There's no reason that patients should be without this. We all need to take our healing into our own hands. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, another question I always have is, uh, what, what's your response to people that scoff at medical marijuana as medicine when they still don't believe that it, that it has any value? I, like, I, I know many patients, I know many parents who will tell you wrong, first-hand accounts. I know it works for me, it works for so many patients that I've had uh, to deal with, so many family members, so many friends. You cannot deny when somebody has a reaction and then you give them this plant and it helps them. It's the science is there. Anyone else? Dan? I, I guess what I usually respond is by telling people who my typical patient is. My typical patient is somebody who's in their 50s or 60s who's been working all their lives hard, usually physical demanding labor, um, hurts everywhere, um, and really this is the only thing that gives them relief. I think oftentimes when people hear that, it sort of oh. changes their perspective about what this is about. Donna? Um, people who don't believe in medical marijuana, I tell them I'm living proof. And I also tell them um, the Rhode Island law basically fast-tracked through our Senate because of the influence of a particular senator, Senator Slater. And it was because he himself had cancer. And in my years of testifying, I've met many of the senators who bat battle very, very difficult health um, problems and still go to the state house every day and do their job. Not necessarily are they medical marijuana patients, but they are the ones who supported our program and pushed it through. Um, you have to remember that everyone in this room at some point is going to have somebody to the left or the right of them that is going to be having a health problem, cancer, something, a stroke. And when you see the odds and the, the evidence of the benefits without the side effects, Everybody at some point is going to be on board. Anyone else? Uh, Annie? Dr. Annie Casta, medical doctor. So um, today, today, just doing research, I saw, I just Googled research in America Morgana, and more than 20,000 articles are out there showing evidence based medicine, how marijuana works. I think that everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think every medicine, everybody has their opinion on a medicine, whether it's prescription marijuana or just a Tylenol have their right to use whatever they want, including medical marijuana, and if they don't want to use it, that's fine, and they have their entitled to their opinion, but the evidence is out there. There's more than 20,000 articles talking about epilepsy, talking about cancer, talking about sleep, and the evidence is out there we, if they just research it. Excellent. Thank you, doctor. And um, we, you know, we had uh, some other questions, too, that we wanted to look at. Uh, with the medical marijuana in Massachusetts right now, Donna had mentioned about the lack of caregivers. I had brought up access, the lack of access. There's a new medical marijuana uh, bill at the State House that would alleviate some of the issues that we have. It would give us, uh, I believe, some re reciprocity. It would definitely give us protection and privacy as medical patients, job protection, custodial protection. It would also give us caregiver service, which we really need. It would lift that. And there were, uh, I believe, 16 co-sponsors at the Mass State House. So this is a new bill. Awesome. It actually might go somewhere. So I want to give everyone a round of applause for that. Yeah. Might, might, we, maybe we can be as good as Maine or Rhode Island. That's what this bill is trying to do. Does everyone on the, board, uh, on the panel support that? Have you looked at the bill? Do you know about it? I've heard about it through you guys. Through me. Um, yeah, we're, we're, but I, I think that anything you do, I, I told Mike before, um, our program did not go smoothly. I can tell you that. I've been, I'm going on my fourth two-year card, so I've been a patient for a while, and there's been some bumpy, bumpy roads. The only reason why I had difficulties with the police, I clearly had the qualifying conditions, you know, no hair, struggling for life. Um, it was because back then there were no doctors. I mean, they would have you jump through so many hoops and tell you, yes, I know you have cancer and you deserve it, but I'm just not ready yet. It was impossible to get. We need to have caregivers. They have to have protected rights. 
we ha need to have enough medicine to treat a lot of conditions. Definitely. And uh, Holly, do you want to pipe in? Uh, yeah, I think that the the new regulation that was introduced is a step in the right direction. Uh, however, I do think that a full repeal of prohibition might be something that is going to work a lot better um, and keep the medicine at a low cost. Uh, I don't want to see any patient fi file for bankruptcy because they couldn't you know, afford their medicine. There's so many hoops that we're jumping through already and to add another price barrier there um, is going to be a challenge. So I think that it's an improvement um, upon the current regulation. However, it's not perfect but it's taken a very long time for us to get here. As Donna mentioned, um, it didn't happen overnight in Rhode Island. It took a very long time for that law to go into effect. People don't realize. Um, it's it been takes time. A lot of time and hard work. California. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And that's what you, when you right? say repeal prohibition, I think, yeah, it sounds awesome, but you know how long that will take? <laughs> right. So yes, uh, I support this bill. Uh, anybody else uh, want to weigh in on the bill or any, any proposals like that at the State House? I guess I would just want to speak also um, for my concern about it limiting the access as it currently is to, the disp to dispensaries. Um, I think it's really important for people to be able to grow at home, to grow their own medicine. Yeah, home grow. Yeah. That's what we're talking yeah. about. We, we want home grow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially dispensaries aren't open, so why you can't we? We need more than one We need more yeah. home grow. Yeah. So does the, let's ask that. Is that a consensus on this panel that we, ne we need, as patients, as the patients you hear from, you talk to, we need more home grow, less regulation on home grow. Is that, uh, yes. we all in consensus yes. on that? Yeah, yes. absolutely, yes. And I, is the audience <laughs> in consensus? Because, you know, when we were coming up with this whole convention thing, that was kind of my idea. That's why I was like, cannabis convention, like, it's got to be a little bit political and you guys got to be involved. So is that is that what people want? Let's hear, see a show of hands. Do you want to see more? Home grow access at the state house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let the people yeah. grow. It looks like the majority of the room agrees with us. All right, thank you. See how that works? Well, why aren't the politicians doing that though? Well, they need to get active, and they need to make sure that their representatives know that you want that. Call them. Be pains. They call hate them. emails. Email them. Send yeah, we 20. gotta ask them. We gotta ask them. Everyone that raised their hand, ask them. I see a lot of familiar faces and some not familiar, but. Ask them. Ask those state reps. It makes a difference. I can't tell you. I've, I've, I've moved a lot of politicians. And all it took was an email or a phone call or when I see them. You, you run into them. You're at a party. Hey, man, I'm, I'm Mike Can. They, they, they're nice people most of the time. So uh, we had one here today, Diane Evans. She was, I mean, uh, I'm, 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 I'm screwing up names. It's pretty funny. Diane Russell. Diane Russell. Uh, we had one, and she's great. So uh, medical marijuana. Let's talk about the success stories, because I think, like, Bill Hicks. You guys know Bill Hicks? Yeah, all right. Bill Hicks used to have, like, uh, good drug stories, right? The news never covers that. It's always, like, someone jumped off a bridge high on weed. They never, like, dude cured cancer high on weed. That, that story never runs, so let's talk about the success stories of medical marijuana. Do you, I know you run into, you, this woman is a success story on medical marijuana. We have one right here, so let's hear it for her. She survived cancer. And I smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, she has proof. It's, Holly, you, you work with patients. Absolutely. Um, I had a good friend who, um, he had stomach cancer and he wasn't able to, obviously hold down a lot of food, and, and he was a smoker, a heavy, heavy smoker, just for recreational purposes, never really thought that this would be a medicine for him. And then he found, um, well, I introduced him to a concept of like the Rick Simpson oil, kind of gave him a little bit more knowledge on that, and immediately he was interested in using this as an alternative um, or a in addition to the current therapies that he was utilizing. Um, within a day, his blood counts, and I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, uh, and I do not play one on TV, so I'm not 100% sure where his counts went, but they increased. They showed a positive result by him just taking this, and that was one day. 
Um, he was able to eat, he was able to um, mitigate some of the pain. And this is something that you see firsthand. I know lots of parents who have children who are experiencing different disorders. Um, I have a lot of friends who are coming back, um, current vets that have post-traumatic stress. They're on ridiculous amounts of prescription medication and they do not want to be on prescription medication and they need something to be able to um, combat this. And people who have never looked at this as a source before are coming to us saying, I tried it and it worked. And I'm so thrilled, I'm, I'm happy there's an alternative, there's, some, there's hope for me. Um, it's been amazing, I, I see people call me every day. I just had a friend who left Massachusetts to go to Seattle because their law is a lot better. She emailed me um, today asking me questions about, you know, how is this gonna affect her when she does go to move home? Um, because her, her son, who's only been taking CBD oil for four days, four days, is already seeing a positive result. And she had to move across the country for that. So there's some anecdotal evidence, all right? Yeah. Real life. And um, they're doctors. Because I know you see patients and you get all their information. Yeah, I think, I think every day in Canada Care we see positive results. I mean, for pain, I think it's, it's, it's incredible. I think what I hear from my patients and what they say, them going from having to use three Percocets a day to not having to use anything at all because of the cannabis. But to me, and one of the, the stories that I have uh, most in heart was I have a patient who has Lou Gehrig's disease, um, which it's a neural, neural disease that affects uh, every, every nerve in your body. And usually that, that, those people die within two years. And he's been treating himself with medical marijuana for 15 years. And he's wow. like, he walks into the office. And for 15 years... He walks he's, his dogs? He walks into the office. And these oh, walks into the office. And these patients usually stop walking after a year. And he's been walking and he's active and he's been active for 15 years because of marijuana, medical marijuana. And I think, to me, that's one of the most successful stories that I've seen. And it's that, it, it is, it's those physical pain diseases. I have the back pain. It's just, it's nothing compared to what I think he's suffering from, but it's kind of the same thing. It's that yeah, daily I, nerve pain. Yeah, it's, and, I'm a, and I'm a sports doctor and, I'm, and so I see pain every day in, in my office and to be able to give them an alternative to just a prescription, um, I think it's, it's a great thing. I think medical marijuana is a great thing. Excellent, thank you, Dr. Casta of Canacare Doctors. Uh, we also have Dr. Don, uh, Dan, I always screw up the names, Dr. Dan <laughs> Einstein. Yeah. yeah. What so, do you think, bro? So I, I would tell, of course totally agree about the pain and I would also add anxiety to that as something that I see every day and that is well treated with it. I, I guess my most dramatic story um, is, is a patient I had who had, that had Crohn's disease, um, a disease which gives you diarrhea 20, 25 times a day, often bloody, um, can result, you know, tons of medications can often result in, in a big part of the gut having to be taken out. And that was what this guy was looking at, was he was, had tried all the medications, he was looking at his gut, gut being taken out. Um, he started taking some uh, of the extracted oil orally. Next day he was done. He really? to be on any medication. Just the oil, just, just, the, the oil. just taking it orally. Yeah. Do you find, like, as a doctor, like, every patient's different in terms of what they're going to try and use, or are there certain diseases that, like, I know this is the best? I mean, you have different, you can do oral, you can smoke it. People discuss medical marijuana, and the, and the sensational media is always about the smoked form. Right. I mean, they, they, a lot of people do smoke it, but there's other uses. Like, how do you, how, like, when you have these interactions, do you sure. talk to them, uh, the patients about this? Yeah. Absolutely, and, that, and different diseases, of course, will have different ways you want you want to take it. Of course, as a doctor, I don't like smoke, um, so I prefer people to vaporize or, or take as edibles. Um, so vaporize is safe. Yeah. We, okay. And uh, but uh, you know, so and, you know, I, I don't I don't want to promise that somebody who's taking an, uh, an extracted oil is going to have the same result same benefit that this guy had, but it was certainly. In general, I found really good results with Crohn's. That was the most dramatic one, for sure. Um, but certainly different. Um, you know, I think pain is something where something um, you want something a little bit faster acting. The edibles can be a little tricky for that. Um, so a vaporizer or a tincture, I think, could be better for pain. Um, but uh, you know, it, it varies a lot from person to person. Excellent. 
Um, you know what? We could do a maybe a question and answer too. I, I you guys be open to that? First? Yeah. What? Can I make a point first. Yeah, you want to come, Donna? Wanna go ahead. You're always you, you can always make a point when I have a microphone. I just wanted to say that um, one of the things that I, I think is key to talk about too um, that I noticed in my own personal journey is that not enough people who use cannabis use it enough. They, if you're going to use it for pain management or to actually manage a syndrome disease, it pretty much has to do what probably six to 10 pharmaceuticals used to do. So you have to use it a lot. Like um, an example of it is um, I had to go through hormone treatment because I was put into menopause at 44 because of the breast cancer. And um, one of the hormone drugs it was a shot and it forces you into menopause and it used to cripple me for three to four weeks. Yeah, I mean, isn't I, this... I would no, lock no, up... Donna, let me ask you this because I agree with you. Some, some conditions, we know this. We set these limits and the cost that they charge us for the medical cannabis. They say the average person should use this amount. In certain cases, you might need a lot more cannabis because you're... <laughs> I mean, some weeks when my back, I need more. I need more, and, and, variety, and I need a lot sometimes. A variety. Yeah, like because, uh, and it's so expensive. That's you, what gets me is the yeah, cost. You build like, can up we talk? Tolerance too, I want to bring up that. Why don't we talk up. about the cost for patients? What What can we do to see the cost come down for patients? Because that's I think more whether it's growers. the black market or the legal market more with medical, growers. how can we get the cost down for patients? More growers and competition. If you just have one set group of growers three rich guys that throw down millions and have their farms, you're not going to have any competition. There's no competition. More the growers. prices are always going to stay up. You have to have a variety of choices in your medicine and in your grow. So we got one for more growers. Well, I'll say two. I'm, I'm already there. More growers. Yeah, I think home cultivation would be a key to keep Home the cultivation, yeah, yes. Lower for the patients. Home cultivation. The doctors? Yeah, both, both the home grower and more competition. Excellent. Economics Yes. Yeah, and I agree too. And I, I'm just to make another plug for home cultivation. I think that that connection that you can get from from growing your own medicine, I think, is also worth a huge a huge it thing, is. even beyond the benefits. I know. What, what what's wrong with the? Uh, you know, we 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 love craft beer. Right. We love the guy that wants to open up a craft brewery, don't we, in Massachusetts? But we don't like the guy that wants to do the same thing with medical marijuana to help patients. Why is that? My, my son, Robert, had a patient, and we took him on. He was stage four. He lasted three years. God love you, John. And um, he was a botanist. So he had a four-plant little system in his closet. That kept that guy alive. Meeting my 23-year-old son every week and having their time in that garden kept him alive at least three years longer than he was supposed to be. He was riddled with cancer. Yeah. It gives people life. It is life. It's a plant. Yes, Growing it does. Growing it makes you happy. The medicine makes you happy. And the Sharon and I'll the Karen. That's a, you don't know, sound here for Sharon and Karen because I see it happen. Yes, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, why don't we do that question and answer? I know this is medical marijuana as medicine. Again, this is Donna Hackett medical marijuana patient, legal in Rhode Island. She's a pioneer. She survived cancer. She survived raids on her home with her family where they were threatening to throw her son in jail. Donna Hackett. Yeah, give her an applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and we have Holly Evans. She's a healthy, healthy lifestyle. I want to thank her personally for helping out me immensely in, in this whole event as well as just all the patients that I know. She's always, she, her and her husband are awesome. If you need any advice, anything in this movement, she's a good resource. Holly Evans. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. And the two doctors, uh, yes, Holly, give her more. And the two doctors, I mean, we have these two young doctors who, I love it. You guys are doing the work. They're like prescribing patients medical cannabis is so important right now. You're doing it, you're here. Um, we have Dr. Dan Einstein, and yes, and Dr. Annie Casta, medical doctors. So do we have any questions from the audience? I know, where's my taxi 
cat. Did he leave? Oh, we got a question over here. We had this taxi driver all day, and, I'm, and he questioned everyone else. Where's my question, taxi driver? He must have left. All right, you got a question. Why don't you, uh, what's your name first? Mike has a question. What, uh, well, tell us who you are. Are you from around here, first of all? Yeah, I live in Cambridge, and I'm over at MIT. MIT? You're an egghead. <laughs> you work there or you go to school there? I, I work there. Oh, wow, he's really, yeah, you're doing good. I, I, I lived in that neighborhood for a long time, and I've been trying to work there. Say it again. I've been living there a long time. I wanted to work there for a while. Yeah, yeah. it's a great place to work. So you got a good job. I do. What's your question for our panel? So in your experience, for each of you guys, how do you, and, and possibly our grower, I can't hear him. and possibly our grower too, how do you match strain choice with symptom or condition that you're trying to treat? Does everyone hear that? How do you match conditions to strain types? So if you have a back pain or lupus or, will you give the answer to Rob? Rob, Rob you want to answer that one? We have Rob. Rob is the son of Donna, grower. her grower. What do you think, Rob? Well, <laughs> you usually just have to go through the Underground Railroad or the medical uh, community. You pretty much have to base what you're going to do off of everybody else's opinion that's actually gone out and tried it. <laughs> so once you match that up, the key is trying it. It's trial and error until we really he figure out He tried a lot of strains serious. on me. A lot. A lot of yeah. strains. <laughs> certain things, certain plants work for certain things. They're so individual just like the rest of us are. So. And because, oh, go ahead. And because it's a. Uh, so a lot of it is trial and error. You try the different strains. You see what works. And you also talk to the community because they might have some good strains and genetics to start you off. It's always good to share genetics. Perfect. Anyone else want to answer, Holly? Well, I think it's important. Like, uh, it's you got to ask your farmer. You have to know. You know, talk to your grower and ask him about the different strains. If it's a high indica versus a sativa or a hybrid, um, it's going to affect you differently. And everyone is different. That's you know, kind of the fun of it is it is, it is trial and error. Um, and, and no one's ever died from this. So let's keep that in mind. So there's you know no overdoses or anything like that. So. It's really individualized to the patient and their needs. And the more research that we can do, we can understand what strains will work best with what ailments. Thank, I, thank I you. I always tell people it's not a one size fits all. You can't put marijuana in a box. It's experimental. If this isn't working, try something else. Mix this, mix that, mix up your regimen, mix up the oils you use. Okay. I use just about everything. My new favorite thing is uh, cannabis infused olive oil. Oh my God. Yeah, olive it, oil, huh? I Did shoot it right down in a dropper, smooth, and it, it's just, it's relaxing. It has so many good attributes. Thank you, Donna. And uh, what about the doctors? Do you have any advice on uh, kind of that genetics and matching to the condition? Excellent. Dan? I, I'd agree with that, too. I think you can, you can make sort of general rules that a high THC or a, high, or a sativa strain is going to be more pain-killing, a high CBD or indica strain is going to be more anti-anxiety. Um, but those are really just starting points because, you know, everybody's an individual. This is the plant that you're, deal, you're, you're dealing with. Each plant is different. Each grower is yeah, different. Yeah, even, even within that plant. Someone was mentioned to me today, which is so true. Like, it depends on, like, you know, we got cuts of beef, right, in a steak. And, and, and where the cut of the beef determines what kind of steak you got, right? Well, in, in the plant, it's kind of like that. Absolutely. Like different pieces of the bud are going to be different than other parts of the bud. Yeah. They have the same bud. Yeah. yeah. And maybe you, <laughs> you grow the same plant in fall or in spring. Maybe. The top might be the best. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you getting schooled? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Always. We're always learning. Um, all right. So I want to thank Rob for coming up here. The son answering the question. Give him a pause. And uh, say your name again. Mike Halsall. Mike, you get the T-shirt. This, uh, this is my friend Michael Malta, who would be here today. He was known as the king of pot. He was the activist extraordinaire. And uh, we got one of his T-shirts we're giving you for that question. Thank you. And thank you, Michael Malta.
And uh, if we have any other questions, I got one more T-shirt. We got any more questions? I still don't have. You got a question over here. I still don't have. You still haven't got the answer? Have, I never got a KOP T-shirt. Well, we'll get you one today. You I got you one. I got you on that. You, you tell me you what better. size later you get that. <laughs> she wants a shirt. She getting it. Yo, I swear Not that one. No, 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 no. We got plenty of shirts. Shirt. She's getting a pick later. Half ounce joint on so, stage. I didn't get a shirt. Can you believe she, that? She's getting one. <laughs> So your name, gentlemen? Scott. Yes, yeah, Scott Hacker. Um, I play professional golf. And professional golfer. Remember I said something about sports earlier? I was an all-star wrestler. Bob LaBell, the sportscaster. Mikey Adams from EEI here today. And now we got a professional golfer here. Gee, uh, weed, and, weed and sports? <laughs> weed and sports go together? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it does. It does. I mean, it's... it's uh, you know, I can't. I can't actually smoke while I play. I don't. You don't smoke when you play? No, no, that doesn't work for me. People smoke weed and play golf. Well, but they do. But they have mixed results. Trust me. <laughs> All right, that's off the Th subject. There's some fantastic <laughs> creams that you can use on your muscles <laughs> after long days of that, of golf. <laughs> Not with professional golf. Okay. So you're, you're a professional golfer, you're here today. You have a question for the panelists. What is your question, sir? You know, my, my question is, is what is, it, what is your advice or what is your opinion when you have a cannabis, a cannabis patient that might be concerned about their employer? Like, wh what do you say to somebody that, you know, there's this contradictory thing going on there with the employer and the, you know. I'll speak on it, number one, because, you know, I became my can because of that very issue. You know, I was a, a financial advisor with a name Mike Crawford, managing millions of dollars, but I wanted to start doing this stuff. So I was using the name Mike Can to kind of shield myself until I was ready to come out fully and, and to have an employer that I knew would understand. So my advice to activists and people who are like me at a crossroads, you're, you're in one place and you want to be at another, you don't have to do it overnight. Pick your battles. Do it right. Don't throw your life away, but you'll get there. You'll get there. You'll find an employer. Make it make it important. And uh, like I, you know, when I became uh, Mike Can, Mike Can got so big that Mike Crawford couldn't hide from it anymore. It's like that's the point where you're protected no matter what. I look at it like Mikey Adams here, Bob LaBelle, myself. I'm not going to lose any more jobs. I'm going to get jobs because of my can, because of, you know what I'm saying? So we've kind of turned it. Like, you may lose some jobs, but you're gonna get a lot more jobs. Okay, good, great, yeah, thank you. Anyone else wanna speak on it? Um, thank you, at the, I think that, again, I don't play a lawyer on TV either, so until there's case law that's set in Massachusetts for large corporations to utilize in their, their um, drug policies, we won't be able to see like, um, you know, if, you, if you're tested by the DOT per se, uh, that's still, it's a federally Definitely. legal substance. If you're, if you're tested by certain agencies with marijuana, you're, you're gonna lose your job. Yes. Um, but what I'm talking about is certain employers are, can be cool on it. We know this, right? If, if I'm an artist, if I'm at Dick Boston, they don't care, they like weed, you know? And medical marijuana, where it's going to Massachusetts is we're gonna try to pass this new law that will protect people who are at least medical marijuana patients from being fired. That's good. But we should go beyond that. You know, we should, no one should lose a job over a joint. Well, are we all in agreement, convention? Yes. Are we all, let's hear, nobody yeah. should lose a job over a no joint. No one. All right. Well, that's the thing that surprises me is Boston is the hub of, um, you know, healthcare. Smoking? Yeah. Um, but it's also um, for lawyers. Yes, big where, where time lawyer, healthcare city. Where are these guys? Come out and start yeah, where are they some for case weed? law. What the hell? You can. There's a lawyer on every street corner in New England. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Do you, do you hear <laughs> a, as the doctors here? Uh, do you hear from patients concerned that they might lose a job because of the medical marijuana use? Is that something you hear from them? Yeah, absolutely. It's a conversation I have pretty frequently. And uh, the reason I didn't answer before is I don't really have a good answer for it. Yeah. So at this point, you know, there's some protection because, you know, there's medical marijuana in Massachusetts, but really, if an employer wants to fire you over it, they probably can't. They can. Yeah. They can right now. But will they? Is it worth it to them? Because I look at it like if they do, Mike Can is going to be talking about them in Dick Boston. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be 
doing my radio show, I'm going to be saying, what are you doing, Comcast? <laughs> you know, and I think it does have an effect, and I think we are winning because of that. There is some people, you know, I, I know that one of my reporter friends went to Comcast and actually asked them that question. What would you do when a medical marijuana comes in with a card? She's an employee, and she's got a... And they said, we don't know. We want them to fix the law so we're protected. We don't know. We don't want to fire them, but we, we're worried we might get in trouble. Yeah, but those, some, those same companies have to respect when their employees go into grow rooms. When they go, go into, into grow rooms, when, like in Rhode Island, when a cable company comes into your home, you're like, I have a grow room, I have the license. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we see them all the time now. I mean, they, they're comfortable with it. Why shouldn't their employee be yeah. comfortable with them smoking it? Well, That's I mean, ridiculous. I think some jobs, safety jobs, driving, there can be some question. All right, all right. Let's be. Uh, well, there's a difference. Everybody drives but off. When, they, when, when, when they're when they're saying it for the guy that's working at Staples, though, it's just or, or selling you car insurance or whatever. It's like the 99 percent of people should just be left alone on it. In most cases. All right. I think we're all in agreement with that too. Yeah, I know that um, like you don't have to register to take OxyContin in Massachusetts. So. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's uh, legally discretion is probably smart at the workplace. You know, if you, especially if you're not sure. If you think your employer would not be cool with it, think about it. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with being uh, at these events and using a different name. There's not, you know, like, to, it's people do that to protect themselves at certain points. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. But uh, I think in the end, being vocal and being, you know, being out there on it, it's going to protect you more than worrying about it or find a new job find a new career <laughs> thank you all right thank you all right uh oh mikey, you got a t-shirt mikey i want to touch upon something you want to say something donna yeah, um we as a society has allowed our health care and government to turn many of our young people and elderly people into pill heads pill we heads. blindly watched it go on Okay, take a pill for this, take a pill for that, take a pill. It's destroying so many people. And if, if we don't start shouting out, we're tired of it. I, I don't, I don't take any pills. The next surgery, the next battle with cancer, it's all going to be cannabis. I don't trust anything else. I've had the worst side effects. But we're, we've also created an epidemic in heroin. All this pill addiction became opioid addiction, became heroin addiction. And I can tell you, they ask this often on Facebook, does it help with canna with heroin withdrawals? Yes, cannabis oil does. Yeah, let's talk there more about that. There are many people, how, many uh, people. How many people uh, would be addicted to those harder Oxycontin pills? I mean, I could have been addicted if I kept taking them. I was prescribed for them when I hurt my back. I, get, I was taking them for a few weeks. I decided I didn't like them. I threw them out. I went to weed. It worked. How many people would not be hooked on these pills if they would just try medical marijuana to see if it worked first? Can we answer that? Do you think? All of them. <laughs> All of them? I, I can tell you from what I've seen, I've seen a lot awesome. of people who are on a lot of pills and were able to come off. Yeah, or even cut them back. Yeah. You know, sometimes they can't even get all, all you know, so many pills they're on. But they could start to scale them back. Yeah, absolutely. And it's I've seen that too. Yeah, it's something I see every day. I think that the patients come for an alternative and they don't want to be using the pills. And I think they should have an alternative. And as a medical doctor, I do still believe in medicine and in pills. But I also believe that the patient should have an alternative. Yeah, and I'm not uh, denying like that, you know, if I have a heart condition and there's a pill for that, I'm taking it. Right. You know what I mean? But so I, I'm about as many options as we can have. And yeah. medical marijuana... For me, it's the non-toxic, you know, non -toxic, non addictive safest medicine. If it works for whatever it is you're dealing with, use that for us. That's what Lester Grinspoon told me, and I know it's true. Yeah, it's a gold that's standard. What, that's what my patients tell me every day. They, yeah. they tell me how many pills they've stopped using because they're getting so much better. Excellent. Um, do we have any more questions? We're about to wrap this up. What about Dr. Uma back there? She must have something to add. She's amazing. I want to bring her down here. Do you have a question for our panel? You want to say thank you? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Mom. I haven't had a chance to meet all you folks, but I'm looking forward to working together and 
This is what it's about. It's not people divided here. It's about all of us coming together and one cause is to make a change and rule number one, do no harm. Do no harm. That's right. Do no harm. Thank you, Dr. Uma. Three doctors up here today. I love it. And more. There's doctors everywhere. All right. So do we have any final questions? I saw some. You have a question. All right. What's your name, sir, and where are you from? from? My name's Randy Mann. I'm from Lowell, Mass. You're from Lowell, and I didn't get your name again. Uh, I'm Randy Mann. Banahan? Randy. 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 Hey. Yeah. Hey, um, how do you guys feel about um, um, weaning um, heroin addicts off um, um, heroin with um, Suboxone and uh, marijuana? Uh, I heard heroin, Suboxone, marijuana. Say that again. Yeah, how do you feel about weaning heroin addicts off of um, Suboxone and marijuana? Oh, how do we feel about... I personally feel that... Marijuana instead of Suboxone? Yeah. Replacing Suboxone? Okay. So how do you, how do you feel about treating heroin I, I addicts with Suboxone yeah. and marijuana? I personally have known a lot of people that, um, you know, as a Facebook activist, you, you meet people from all different walks of life in all different parts of the country that are involved in the cannabis movement now and had a problem other either with alcohol or um, with heroin or with other substances. And it's such a wide spectrum, pain relief and nausea and overall body health that yes, it does help with the withdrawals. Clearly with the withdrawals, you have to start at the high end and work your way down to the lower I'd end. I'd say if it works, right? If it, yeah, again, if it works. But the oil works, does work it works the for you. And the, what about the, the doctors and uh, Holly? And I would even bring Omar up here again. Do you think Suboxone and marijuana can help people get off heroin? Well, I think, um, as you mentioned earlier, there's a million articles out there. There's new studies being conducted that show that it actually does um, help people come off of either the high heroin or suboxone. So I think that we should look at alternatives. You know, we, we shouldn't allow them to just have this one source. We should look at everything that works. Doctors want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I think that in, in Maine and in Kennecker, I've seen a lot of vets that come back um, and who are battling um, different addictions. And I think um, that they, they're having a lot of success with the cannabis. Awesome. Dan, do you have something yeah, to say, Dr. I, Dan? I would, I would absolutely agree. I think it absolutely has a place in it. It's the, I think this is an area where um, it's really going to be pretty individual. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to make a blanket statement, you know, come off. Definitely, of the definitely. And there could be some people that just did not work for or not the right candidates, maybe. Yeah. But I think the, particularly the synergies of, of, uh, of opiates and, and cannabis together can often really be good as far as bringing somebody off of, uh, of an addiction like that. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Randy. Randa. And Dr. Uman, do you want to weigh in too? You're here. I want to, I want to bring you in. Um, excellent question. But I think this is part of the result of the system, to tell you the truth. Doctors got these patients on opioids. We were told in the ERs to give out opioids because that's the only reason a patient was going to come into the ER. Otherwise, they could go to an urgent care. And then we got heroin out there, and it works. And I don't know if people realize, United States is 5% of the world's population, and we are consuming 80% of the world's opioids. I think there was something, a stat I saw, 298 million prescriptions written last year by doctors, which means every adult in the United States can have a one-month supply of opioids. Unacceptable again. No, unacceptable. That's a great statistic. Thank you, Dr. Thank you Uma. And, uh, wh you know, we, we have a mayor. Doc uh, let's, let's talk about politics, because like I said, I'm the weed politics guy, right? I did this thing uh, that went viral earlier this year where I challenged uh, Charlie Baker. He likes to drink the beers. And I said, I'll, I'll do a smoke out versus your beer out. We'll, we'll have a contest and see who goes to work on Monday morning. So far, he hasn't answered, but it went viral, like, my neighbors, my family was calling me going, oh my God, I saw this on that website. So, we're gonna talk about the same thing because these, these reps, Walsh, Mayor Walsh in Boston, Charlie Baker, the new governor, they keep talking about heroin and opioids. Well, we got a solution right here. It's called medical marijuana. It's called try marijuana maybe. And you won't talk about that. You won't talk about that. For pain especially. People have long, if you have pain for 10 or 15 years, you're going to need something. 
why not try marijuana? That's going to reduce the, the opioids. Why don't they talk about that? And I think, too, it was, everybody was kind of um, pointing out that, you know, I, was a t I'm a, I used to be a town meeting member. I worked for the Chamber of Commerce in my town. I, I had a successful painting company. And people wouldn't look at me as a traditional um, medical marijuana patient until I came out to them and said, I use marijuana, I use cannabis every single day. I'm up here, you know, I, it's been a while today, but every day I medicate and me. I have to in order to get by. But people will say, oh my gosh, you're high right now in front of people speaking and I can still conduct my job. I can still be a You still get it done, Holly. It I've done. been around you. The woman gets it done. <laughs> We're doing all she right. smokes weed every day and she gets it done. I'd be doing it better if I, you know, if I well, was. Well, vaporized. I think it's vaporized. In, ingest, medibles, topicals, however you'd okay. like to okay. take them. Any, 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 you, you, we've kind of hit this ad nauseum. Maybe wrap it up. You have anything to add, doctors? No, I think, I think that, I think something important that we should end up here today is that I think it's in our hands. I think it's in every individual here to tell your neighbors, to tell your families, to tell them. We need to change the laws in Massachusetts. We need to bring medicine to the patients. And we have a lot of patients, and it does work. There is evidence, and we should all come together um, to help. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Casta, medical doctor. And uh, Dr. Dan. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think also I would add the power of the story, you know, that for people who are getting benefit from cannabis, it's really the, the, the key is to be able to share that as widely as you feel safe to do that. Um, because that's what really what, what changes people's minds, makes them realize that this is not what the stereotypes suggest it is. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank everyone for the questions, everyone for attending today. This is a great event from the booths. Check out all the booths. And uh, I want to thank all the speakers, everybody who's been on the stage today, and especially our panelists, all the questions that came in. Um, again, I want to thank Dr. Dan Einstein at the end with Integrate, and I also want to thank Dr. Annie Casta, she's also a medical doctor, from Canacare Doctors, and uh, a big thank you to Holly Evans, she's the owner of Healthy Heady Lifestyle, check out the website, it's her mission to provide tools, resources, information to people interested in cannabis for their health, and we also have, as I said, survivor Donna Hackett, medical marijuana mom, patient, survivor, advocate, thank you. Please, let's hear a huge round of applause for all of them. And I am Mike Can. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to be doing this again. There will be tickets available. Please come down. Don't go home yet. The event's still going on. Thank you again very much.